Abiola, thank you for joining us. I mean, the pictures tell a story um, of destruction. Please explain to us the connection between climate change and what we have today, and how can a government be better prepared? So first of all, flooding is a natural occurrence, um, stimulated by quite a number of, of things. One, increased rainfall um, based off of, you know, climate activities, um, you know, and also the fact that when you have um, sea level rise, um, ocean level rise, you then have potential flooding. Incidentally, or ironically in this case, Meduguri happens to be um, one of those areas where it's within the floodplain. Now, here, when you speak to climate um, in this context, there are quite a number of convergence of things that, you know, creates the effect of what we see with Meduguri. One is, of course, there was um, an opening of the dam and Meduguri being on the floodplain, um, automatically um, water from the dam actually went into the Medigree Township. But more importantly, um, is what we now see in terms of the urban sprawl that has um, increased within the Medigree axis because of, you know, this is very connected to the Boko Haram effect where there's been quite a number of people that have moved into places that are safer zones and, you know, what you could call uncontrolled development has happened. Uh, so fundamentally what you have is increased populations that is unplanned, um, what you call urban slums would have developed uh, across the place. And that's the reason why it seems that the good degree in terms of population is you know, significantly hit uh, by this. But okay. more importantly is the fact that um, every time you have, you've, you've kind of had this kind of incident, um, you know, one at certain times. So, so in 2015, we had something that hit because, you know, the Cameroonian Dam was opened um, and then, you know, it hit us um, as a country. Um, Please, uh, let me interject here because I, I was actually waiting for you to land uh, so I can ask you that question about the opening of the dam. Um, could you yes. walk us through what could possibly ha have happened? Couldn't they have predicted that there would be a flooding? Is there a better way that that could have been handled? Actually, every time you have, you know, the opening of a dam, there is potentially flooding. And I was just getting to that, that usually what you find is great, a, a, a proper drainage system that manages, you know, the collection and then, you know, the, trunk, the, the movement of water within urban centers, you know, sort of meanders it within the city and takes it um, out somewhere where it has, you know, minimal effect. In fact, the water could be redirected in certain instances for agriculture, could be redirected, you know, um, for other uses that may be valuable. But, you know, just, just looking at the urban terrain that I was describing for Bidugiri, you could, you could potentially see, and like most cities of, of the country, um, we do not have good drainage systems. So it's, it's, a, it's a failure of, of infrastructure, you know, um, development um, in itself to say proper infrastructure needs to be in place. Um, storm drainages um, need to be in place to ensure that, that when you do have these kind of dams open up, um, they are actually collected, the water is collected and is channeled appropriately because this is something that would usually happen. The dam gets full. And as a part of managing the fact that you don't want the dam to actually collapse, because the dam is also an urban infrastructure that helps to generate electricity and also use in agriculture, you are then able to say, you know, as a result of this, you don't want to, you want to minimize the effect of breaking down the dam. So once the pressure of the dam is there, it is something that should happen that you would release the pressure on the dam and then let go of the water. So in this case, the water is let go, but the receiving side is not prepared in this case Meduguri Township, as it were, or uh, municipality, as it were, um, is submerged because of this um, actual effect. Um, so who, who of, you know, I mean, the, the we, we need to practice. know where the blame lies for us to, able, to be able to start to look for solution. Who are those or what are the factors that contributed to, you know, allowing this flooding situation? This could have been avoided, right? Yes, absolutely. It could have been avoided. But like I said, it's a myriad of things, um, you know, should I say collocating 
together creating this effect. Uh, first, you have the aspect of urban planning, which respects yes. to how... Yeah, I know you talked about that, planned. but you also talked about the fact that there is need for available infrastructure to channel the water away. Yes. So whose responsibility... Yes. So urban planning, urban planning will help you basically map out what the storm drainage should look like. And then you should invest in that, get the right investment in, you know, um, in putting those storm drainages in place, right? That's one. Two, development control in itself should minimize when people are building on storm drainages um, so that you don't have cases where the storm drainages are actually built upon. Um, so quite a number of places have now been built upon in Medjugorje that, you know, would have been places probably I, I, I guess not to be fair. before. Um, I guess, to be fair, it's a collective. Uh, the government and the people yeah, all have a it's role a to play. Issue. But looking ahead quickly, in the interest of time, how can Nigeria maybe leverage international cooperation and climate finance mechanisms to enhance its uh, capacity, adaptive capacity, rather, and resilience to climate-related matters? So the, the, the dam is an, it, it's a great infrastructure for providing electricity, but it also helps us manage issues about water that can actually be used for irrigation. So the first thing for us to do is basically do a quick assessment as a people and be intentional about our policy of using, you know, what we have as a resource, um, in this case, as water, um, and then channeling it correctly with the right infrastructure, now drainages, um, you know, to be able to use it for agriculture in certain places. In fact, some of the water can be directed into, you know, what you call your um, storm reservoirs that can later be converted to drinkable water if they are properly um, go through the normal filtration processes. So fundamentally, it's also been intentional about, you know, uh, the fact that we know this is something that will happen and then creating a strategic plan as a people that operationalizes the fact that once the water is coming, we're able to collect, manage, and then, you know, use it for other um, um, useful aspects of our life, drinking water, um, agricultural uses, industrial uses, uh, for instance, as well, uh, is okay. something we can basically do. So it's an intentional plan we need to have. And uh, for, from a climate financing point of view, I, I can very well tell you that if we present um, a correct plan, a correct plan, plan of action in terms of infrastructure that helps us uh, manage uh, this aspect of climate events as a mitigation strategy, definitely we'll be able to get financing um, as a country for this. All right, Abiola, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me.